Okay, I've had a couple of questions regarding keeping your money safe when you're in the Philippines. Uh, but this this works anywhere, um, not just the Philippines. Uh, I'll do two videos, one about credit cards, that sort of thing, and the other one about cash. This first one is about, uh, well, let's just run through the points. First thing is, when you get your wallet, take out anything you don't need. You know, you've got your diner's card and other bits and pieces that you're not going to use in the Philippines. So you could have excess credit cards, but if they get stolen, you've got all the hassles of um, getting them uh, cancelled, plus reordering them, plus you may actually uh, want them when you get back. Uh, also, use your credit cards for major purchases. If you're buying a camera or something else, they've got insurance policies. So that's why I like, I mean, my father does it. He, he buys stuff, from, when he buys stuff uh, from Hong Kong or whatever, he buys it on a credit card because it's got insurance. Keep an emergency credit card. Now, the reason, see, I don't have any credit cards at all. Like, my, I'm a, if I haven't got cash type person, I don't use it. But basically, you keep a credit card with a emergency amount on it. Um, it's not a card you use for anything except just if you are stuck. Um, for example, if your wallet gets stolen with all your cash and everything in it, this credit card will be somewhere safe where you can just whip it out and it will get you out of trouble. Um, Monitor your debit cards regularly because um, if you're overseas, just keep an eye on the transactions because I've I've had it before when I was in Greece where the transaction come through a month later um, that I didn't recognize on my card. Um, it was a purchase I'd made, but the point was it was like it already gone through a month later when you start thinking, hang on, hang on this, I haven't been to Greece, Greece this month. But you could actually have something that's been double swiped, uh, which is quite common in the UK with uh, petrol stations where a lot of uh, terrorism money was going, being double swiped for fraud, uh, where they take your card, you know, when you're they swipe it for processing and they'll swipe it into two machines and steal the information. So keep an eye on your transactions so that if there is a problem, you can see it early on. Always keep a photocopy of your important documents. What I do, copy my license, copy my passport copies, uh, anything like that, and keep those separate. So if you've got a backup. Um, sometimes I'll leave some in my suitcase and some in my backpack that I carry around. And then um, I keep the originals sometimes in my wallet. But if I'm going out and they say, you've got to have ID with you, I normally just take the paper copy and not the originals. Um, let your bank and credit card providers know that you're going overseas. <laughs> now, this may seem a bit stupid, but the fact is you could get overseas and try and run your cards or something and find out they won't authorize anything because they didn't know you're overseas. So it is important you let them know you're going and how long for. So if it's only for two weeks, let them know it's only for two weeks because after that, and if any transactions get run through, Maybe they'll they'll flag up that the uh, you're not there. Um, limit the amount of value bills you carry with you. Now, I have a, a gold ring, my um, a watch, and pretty much that's it. If I'm going to a market area, I'm not wearing a ring. I'm not wearing a gold watch. They're they're put away safe. Um, because valuables are very risky. Um, even if it's a fake watch, you know when you say, oh, it's only a fake watch. Somebody robbing you does not know it's fake. And because you're a foreigner, they often see it as an original just because you're wearing it. And you'll hear Filipinos say that, you know, it, it looks more expensive because you're wearing it. <laughs> it's not worth getting shot over. Um, just don't just don't do it you know uh, get a little Casio watch or something you know cheap watch that looks cheap nobody's gonna bother you um, and try to limit and not wear jewelry if possible um, necklaces for example one of the things in Cebu you'll get somebody run past and just grab it and run they'll just snap it and run um, it doesn't cost them a lot to have it fixed but they can easily uh, sell it 
So they'll, they'll just snap it off your neck and run past. And by the time you swung round, uh, as they've gone behind you, you won't even see who it was that have already disappeared into the crowd. A lot of it is kids. Um, separate your cash. Um, now, this one happened to me in Spain because when my wallet was stolen in Spain, there is like 50 pounds in the wallet. It was still quite a bit of cash, but that was for my money going back to the UK. My money for Spain, I had in my left pocket, my right pocket, and some bits in my rucksack. I split it down. So even though my wallet was stolen, I still had everything. Also, my passport was not in my wallet. Avoid going to places that have a high risk of pickpocketing or theft. Um, if you've got to go to there, like I says, I remove my watch. I remove my ring. I also don't take my wallet. What I do is, like I said, I'll take the documents, but the paper versions folded up in my pocket, and I'll take the exact amount of money I need. What I normally do is I'll actually keep my money here in my hand with, under my thumb because um, if I'm going to the market, I'm only going to go and buy food or whatever. So I'm only carrying the equivalent of like 10 pounds, uh, 12, 13 dollars, whatever. It's not a lot of money. So you don't need to, if you don't need to carry it, don't take it. Um, one of the things I do a lot is I work a system in hotel rooms where I work to leave a building. Um, I spend a lot more time in hotels than most people do. Uh, last year, I spent nine months in hotels. That's how, <laughs> uh, to give you an idea, uh, Monday, Friday, I, I do uh, most of my days in hotels. And what I do is I take my bags to the door and then I'll go to the bathroom, check the bathroom's got everything as I'm leaving, empty the bathroom, then close the bathroom door, move everything to the door, then I'll work my way from the corner of the room outwards, checking that everything's gone, check under the bed, whatever. And you just make sure you got everything with you. And once you work into your system, you know when something's missing because it's, you work a methodical way so that, you know, passport goes here, driving license here, uh, your shirt's here, wash bag here. And you get a methodical, then you don't make mistakes. Um, it's the same way as like with uh, pilots or whatever when they check an aircraft. They always check it the same way. Um, the reason being is if you get into a routine, you automatically do it. So you notice when something's not right because that process does not change. Um, very important way of doing it. The same if you hire a car. When you do a car, do it as if you're cleaning it. So what I do is I'll put the stuff uh, near the, the driver door or whatever that I'm uh, emptying and then I'll go through the car even if I'm not vacuuming or anything it um, I just check under the seats glove box work your way through the car to make sure you haven't left anything behind because what happens is sometimes you'll get a passenger in there and they've taken something that you've put um, to one side that's important um, and shove it in the glove box because they're it's in their way or you know if you're like me i i sometimes put stuff on the passenger seats when they get in they put it in the glove box so that's why it's important to go through a car the most important thing though is keep everything organized whether it's for the hotel room whether it's your wallet you know like having all your cards in order having your um your your money set up right when i do uh, get to a hotel room um, what I do with the uh, the dresser, the, the table, is I'll put my wallet, my watch, my ring, my phone, all, all in a row so I know exactly where everything is and that I've got everything. Because, um, like, you know, if you come out of the car, if you laid it all like that and you went swimming earlier, you'd know you haven't put your watch back on and it's still sat in the car and there's a good chance it might get stolen. So you can go and get it. And, and lay your stuff out properly. Um, before you leave wherever you're going from, check the destinations, check the areas that you're going to. Uh, does it have 
high crime areas check the forums do they have problems with the hotel safes and things because sometimes uh, the safes can be an issue um, if the safe's not an issue remember to change the code when you're using the a hotel safe um, just double check all the stuff before you arrive because sometimes there's problems sometimes there isn't but it's always worth just double checking some things like uh, these travel forums you'll get all the negative stuff in there and uh, sometimes it's just people complaining but at the same time if something gets stolen from somewhere you're aware of it they'll also say what's the market area what's this what's that it's important stuff um, the other thing you can do which uh, a friend of mine does is he uses prepayment cards now the advantage with a prepayment card if it has to be authorized by your um, debit from your bank account people can't steal anything more than is on the card so if you only put enough on there for two three days uh, and you have to go on the internet to get the uh, transfer more money onto it uh, you're only going to lose a maximum of three days and very likely to lose that uh, to lose that because uh, unless they have their pin number so the prepayment cards are pretty useful for that so this is the first video this one's about the credit card processing uh, you know if you're doing everything by card and not by cash so thanks for watching